Steve Patterson here from Photoshop Essentials. In this video, we'll look at the newest and easiest way to fade an image to color in Photoshop, and that's by using live gradients. A live gradient means that everything about the gradient, the colors, the length, the angle, and more, can all be changed after the gradient is drawn. And when we combine that with Photoshop's foreground transparent gradient, we get a fast and easy way to fade an image to any color we need. Let's see how it works. To use live gradients, you'll need Photoshop 2023 or newer. I'm using 2024. And I'll start by creating a new document. Since I'm on the home screen, I could click the new file button or from Photoshop's main interface, go up to the file menu and choose new. For this tutorial, I'll set the width of my document to 3000 pixels and the height to 1600. I'll leave the resolution at 300 pixels per inch and the background contents set to white. And then I'll click Create. And I'll zoom in on my document by going up to the View menu and choosing Fit on Screen. To add the image to the document, go up to the File menu and choose Place Embedded. Navigate to where the image is stored on your computer, click on the image to select it, and then click Place. And Photoshop places the image on the canvas. It also adds the free transform handles around the image so we can resize it if needed and move it into position. I want my image to appear on the right of the canvas and fade to color on the left. So I'll click and hold on the image and then I'll hold the shift key on my keyboard to make it easy to drag straight across and I'll drag my subject over to the right. Then to accept it and close free transform, I'll click the check mark in the options bar. To fade the image to color, select the gradient tool from the toolbar. Then in the options bar, make sure that the tool mode is set to gradient, which will let us draw a live gradient. If it's set to classic gradient, you'll draw the old style of gradient without any of the live gradient features. So I'll switch back to gradient. Then click the gradient swatch. Twirl open the basics folder and choose the foreground to transparent gradient. Press enter or return on a Mac to accept it. Make sure the gradient style is set to linear since we want to draw the gradient in a straight line. Also make sure that reverse is turned off, dither is turned on to help reduce any color banding and leave the method set to perceptual. We'll come back to the method after we've drawn the gradient. Then let's choose a color for the gradient by clicking the foreground color swatch in the toolbar. And this will be the color that the image will fade into. Now, because we're drawing a live gradient, you can always come back and change the color later. So I'll choose white for now, which sets my R, G, and B values all to 255. And then I'll click OK to close the color picker. To draw the gradient, click and hold on the image to set the starting point. Then keep your mouse button held down and begin dragging away from that point. To make it easier to draw the gradient horizontally, hold the shift key on your keyboard and then continue dragging. And one advantage with live gradients is that we see a preview of the gradient as we draw it. Don't worry about getting it right for now. Just draw the initial gradient and then release your mouse button. In the layers panel, notice that the gradient was added on its own gradient fill layer above the image, which keeps the gradient and the image separate. And also notice that we have these on canvas controls that we can use to edit the gradient. You can click and drag the color stop on either end of the gradient to adjust where the gradient starts and ends. Hold shift on your keyboard to drag in a straight line. You can even click and drag the line that connects the color stops to reposition the gradient on the canvas. But I didn't really want to do that, so I'll go up to the edit menu and choose undo move gradient. If you look above that line, you'll see a diamond shape icon. Normally, this icon controls the midpoint between the colors on either side. But because we're working with the foreground transparent gradient, dragging the icon doesn't do anything. But you can adjust the midpoint between the color and the transparency by going to the Properties panel and scrolling down until you find the Opacity controls. Then you can drag the diamond icon below the preview bar to move the midpoint closer to the color or the transparency. And you can reset it back to the middle by setting the location to 50%. 
But notice with my gradient that the transition doesn't look very smooth. Most of the color appears bunched up along the left, and then it fades very quickly towards the right. Switching the gradient to a different method can sometimes help to smooth things out. The default method is perceptual, and it draws colors the way our eyes naturally see them, which is usually what you want when working with gradients. But it's not always the best choice for this effect. There's another method called classic that draws gradients the way Photoshop used to draw them. And notice that the transition now looks a bit smoother. Again, here's perceptual, and here's classic. You can choose the one that works best with your image, but in my case, I think classic looks better. To change the color that the image is fading into, double click on its color stop. Make sure you choose the stop for the color, not the transparency. And then you can choose a different color from the color picker, or you can choose a color directly from your image. But before you do, change the sample size in the options bar from point sample to something larger, like 5x5 five five or 11x11. 11 11. And that way, you'll sample the average color of the area you click on rather than the color of a specific pixel. I'll choose 5x5. Five five. Then just click on a color in the image to sample it. I'll go with the shade of gray from the upper right. Then click OK to close the color picker. At this point, you can still go back and make any final adjustments to the start and end of the gradient. And to hide the on-canvas controls, just go to the Layers panel and select any layer other than the Gradient Fill layer. Reselecting the Gradient Fill layer will bring the controls back, but note that you also need to have the Gradient tool selected in the toolbar. And there we have it. That's how to fade an image to color using the foreground to transparent gradient and the new live gradients feature in Photoshop. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to my channel to learn more about Photoshop. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. I'm Steve Patterson from Photoshop Essentials.